A successful vaccination campaign in Africa is a crucial part of eventually drawing a line under the pandemic worldwide. So far, however, only 7.5% of the population has been fully vaccinated, according to the World Health Organization. One problem? Vaccines are not arriving because rich countries are hoarding them. There's also logistical difficulties with a large rural population. In South Africa, scientists now want to take the development of jabs into their own hands. So African countries hope to become less dependent on vaccines from industrialized nations as quickly as possible. Welcome to your COVID-19 special. I'm Daniel Winter in Berlin. Developing nations have called for patent waivers on COVID-19 vaccines for months so far without significant success. Now one company is setting up Africa's first mRNA hub in Cape Town with the goal of copying the Moderna vaccine. Adrian Kreish reports. It's a first for the continent. This inconspicuous building in an industrial area of Cape Town is the base for Africa's mRNA vaccine technology hub. With vaccines in short supply in Africa, the WHO and COVAX initiative led the drive to set up a local technology sharing platform. That's one of the positive legacies of COVID. We now, in the last eight months, have seen this, this, this massive funding available now for biotechnology in South Africa, in Cape Town and also in Africa. Afrigen is the company tasked with developing and producing mRNA vaccines. These are relatively new but highly effective vaccines that so far only two major companies have commercialized, BioNTech and Moderna. Afrigen was counting on a cooperation with Moderna. The model was that we will receive a technology transfer, turnkey technology transfer, but that didn't happen. So the team now has jumped in with our university partners and the knowledge base in South Africa to develop our own vaccine. One of the key partners is in Johannesburg, the Antiviral Gene Therapy Research Unit at Witwatersrand University. They've been working on mRNA technology since 2015 as one of the only research units on the continent. They are now sharing their skills and knowledge with Afrigen. We have been able to take information which is available in the public domain to work out how the Moderna mRNA is produced. So we have the sequence and we have the context of that sequence which we've been able to reproduce. But of course, the purpose of that really is to use as a reference rather than as something which we want to try and uh, use as a, as a product. Um, so we would like to develop our own ideas and we are in fact doing that already and compare that to the Moderna vaccine. Back in Cape Town, Pietro Terblanche is still hoping Moderna comes on board as this would speed up the process. Moderna has announced a patent waiver while the pandemic is still ongoing, but afterwards no commercialization will be possible without its approval. We would like to have a voluntary license to be able to transfer this technology to other low and middle income countries to use the platform for other vaccines, HIV, TB, Ebola, flu. This hub and, and the capacity and the capability we're building here is, is, is beyond COVID. Today, most vaccines used on the continent are imported. Afrigen and its partners aim to bring the first homegrown product to market within three years. And let's get more on this with Petro Terblanche, who you saw just featured in our report just now, and Charles Gore of the Medicines Patent Pool. Thank you very much to you both for taking the time for us today. Petro, you expect to get the first vaccines on the market within three years based on, on this platform, um, if all goes according to plan. Won't that be too late? After all, other vaccine makers will have increased their capacity massively by then. So, Daniel, if we look at this in isolation, uh, it may be, and we hope that it will be too late because we all want this pandemic to, to go. Um, if you just do basic assessments of current the current vaccine rates in Africa, it will take us 36 months at the current rate to reach 70% of the WHO goal for, goal for vaccination. But the important point is this vaccine, this mRNA hub, is not an isolation. It is a platform which is built for future relevance to establish and build capacity and capability on this continent to be able to, in future, rapidly respond 
and also produce vaccines that's relevant to the burden of disease. This is not only about COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 is the catalyst and it's driving the momentum and, 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 the, and the goal, but it's more than just COVID-19. OK, so it goes much more beyond COVID. Uh, Charles, how important are patent waivers and technology transfer in providing developing nations with vaccines? Um, patent waivers are something being discussed at the moment at, at WTO, and that really that's for governments to decide what they want to do. Um, but patents are important. Uh, patents encourage innovation. Um, but at the same time, that's why we have a, a licensing model that allows us to uh, use those patented um, uh, discoveries. And in the MPP model, to uh, deliver them to low and middle income countries. In the context of the hub, we, as, as uh, Petra so um, clearly said, we are hoping that we would get some uh, technology from Moderna that we could license in. If that doesn't happen, there may be other technologies that we wish to license in because the mRNA field is a uh, rapidly developing field with innovation happening all the time. Uh, it may be possible that the innovation will come from South African universities and we won't need to license it in from uh, big companies in the developed world. But we need to be prepared for that. And then also importantly, once uh, Petro and her team at Afrigen have developed the technology, we then need to license that out to other manufacturers um, throughout low and middle income countries on terms that are that are really promote public health, because that is what this is about. Right, and, and Charles, um, they, there, there is the argument, of course, that just opening up patents, completely making them free, would deter the industry uh, from innovation. So do you agree with that sentiment? I, I actually don't want to be drawn onto, onto whether uh, patent waivers are right or wrong. As I say, that's a, a government uh, decision. And it's being debated at, at the moment. And it's also for industry to say whether they'd be deterred by this. But we have to remember that this is not only about patents. It's also about technology. There's actually no point having a patent waiver if you don't know how then to actually use the technology. And some of this technology is very complex. And you do need that help. So it's actually both patents and uh, technology together. And I don't think those are both being discussed together. It's just the patent side of it. OK, and Petro, uh, just to be clear, so you would like Moderna to give you their technology or to license it to you, um, but standing in your way are shareholders and executives who say, well, if we give you our technology for free or at a discount, that means you should give away your vaccine patents as well that you develop with this platform. What do you say to those people? So firstly, we want freedom to operate, and we have not asked for a handout. We've asked for a negotiation and a mutually beneficial voluntary license agreement. But the conditions will be that for low and middle income countries, there has to be access for the sake of public good. In terms of Afrigen, we're a biotech startup company. We are putting efforts and energy and our knowledge base with this fantastic support we're receiving from all our partners into okay. this program. We have a vaccine facility that we are now donating towards this program. So I have personally no problem for public good to share in a sustainable manner the intellectual property that we develop. OK, thank you very much, Petro Turblanche and Charles Gore. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank nice you, to speak to you. And now it's time to turn to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. If Omicron is highly transmissible but not very harmful, will it outperform other variants? Delta outperformed earlier versions of the virus, so will Omicron soon outperform Delta? Uh, well, this is pretty theoretical territory, but a lot of experts say that when postulating about COVID-19 variants, it's important to uncouple the issues of increased transmissibility and virulence to some extent for a key reason, which is that with all the variants detected so far, 
people can spread SARS-CoV-2 for days before they begin to feel ill themselves. In fact, that stealthy ability on the part of the virus has fueled the pandemic probably more than any other factor. So although there's early evidence that Omicron hopefully seems to not cause more severe disease on average than other variants and quite possibly less severe, there was no guarantee that it would. Um, evidence is piling up, though, that Omicron is very likely more highly transmissible uh, than other variants. By some expert estimates, those who get it might pass it on to twice as many people as those infected with Delta. It kind of goes without saying that transmissibility is a key factor in whether one variant begins outperforming others. But the other central one at this point is not virulence, healthcare officials say, but whether a new variant can overcome existing immunity. Um, Delta, for instance, can infect those who've been vaccinated or who have recovered from COVID-19, but not really that effectively and, and usually not for very long. And uh, those patients generally have defenses that mostly prevent severe disease and, and also curtail the number of people that they can infect in turn. To spread effectively in a, in a world where a lot of people have immune protection, new variants will have to evade it. And at this point, at least, Omicron looks like it's able to do that better than previous variants. But it'll take time for the data to build up enough to provide a clear picture. Um, with Delta, it took months. And that's all from us. Thanks for watching.